After three decades of rule by 89-year-old Robert Mugabe, the new constitution is meant to limit the powers of any future president. Civil rights activists say the changes are too limited in scope and that more democratic guarantees are needed. My guest today on Hard Talk is Zimbabwean Anglican Bishop Julius McConey. Is the church speaking up loudly enough with the people or are clerics asleep at their pulpits? Bishop Julius McConey, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you. Who is the Zimbabwean equivalent of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, an outspoken priest who speaks truth to power? There are many. I don't think there's a single one that I can pick out because all the priests have a role to play and they all speak out in defense of what is of the people, really. Including yourself? Including myself, yes. So when you look at the whole examples of how the Zimbabwean people are suffering UNICEF say three and a half million children chronically hungry. Nearly half of the population in Zimbabwe, 12.7 million, are absolutely poor. You have practically all the workforce don't have any formal employment. What is the last thing you have said, speaking up for the people in that kind of situation? Well, the last thing I have said is that um, we need to do more in terms of protecting the rights of the people, the rights to have access to education, to food, to the creature comfort that they're entitled to. And this is not just, it hasn't come from just one particular part of the um, clerical, um, uh, of, the, of the clerics, it has come from all the churches, sometimes But, but what groups. have you said? Because, I mean, your province is the second most populous in Zimbabwe. Yes. It's in the east of the country. Yes. And uh, you've got, what, nearly two million people in yes. it. And, and, and your flock, the Anglicans there, are about a quarter of a million, a lot of people there badly need of a spokesperson. Are you saying, what did I, Bishop Julius McConey, say on their behalf and uh, where? On their behalf, I have said through sermons and through other gatherings, through other uh, fora, I have said that we need to use the resources, income from the resources in Manikaland to develop Manikaland. We find most of our diamonds in Manikaland, in Zimbabwe. And we need to improve access to the markets. We need to improve the roads. We need to build schools. We need to make resources available. But to you're the not having. You talk about diamonds. Government. You look at the Marangi diamond field. Uh, yes. The government is supposed to get something like six hundred million dollars of yes. revenue for it. And Diabeti, the finance minister, said he'd had something like nineteen million dollars. So <laughs> clearly, your voice is not being heard by those in power. Uh, not yet. It's a process. It will happen. But somebody has to start somewhere to make the noise start somewhere. Well, I, I tell you, I mean, I, I give an example of the kind of things that um, I'm talking about here. The Zimbabwean Catholic Bishops Conference, that's their organisation, is it's no constantly speak out yes. against what they see as the abuse of power and poverty. I'll just give you one example from April 2007 in the pastoral letter. They said, black Zimbabweans today fight for the same basic rights they fought for during the liberation struggle. It is the same conflict between those who possess power and wealth in abundance and those who do not. Do you agree with their sentiment? They're it in very stark terms. Yes, I agree with that. But, but once they have spoken, and they've only spoken about one segment of what needs to be spoken about, the Anglican bishops will also speak about other things. We can't say because the Catholic bishops have said that, therefore we add our voice to it. Yes, we support them, but there are many issues. And all groupings, big church groupings, clerics, denominations, they all cover a very wide okay, field. Very, I mean, the Catholics are a very large community, about three million in Zimbabwe. And of course, Correct. Robert Mugabe himself was born a, a Catholic. Yes. Um, and you are, are fewer. But nevertheless, I, I, I give that example because they speak in such a stark way, constantly a thorn in the side of Robert Mugabe, to the extent, for instance, he said in May 2011, the bishops, the Catholic bishops, are always telling lies, no truth at all. They say the government oppresses the people when the truth is the bishops don't understand the wishes of the majority of the people. They are trying that kind of criticism the Catholic bishops because they are really standing up for people's rights and, and perhaps you have a more gentle approach and don't speak up so much we speak up so much but in, in a more gentle way yes and also because of the issues that, that we decide to tackle they, they, they require that we speak in a more gentle way if you take my diocese for instance it's quite rural 
and it's not always easy to be, to be heard. But we do make noise. It's where we make the noise. That's what counts. But we do make but, a but lot where, of noise. But where, I mean, I, I'm asking you here, Bishop, yes. uh, to, to give us a very, one, one very, very clear example where you yes. have said something or published a letter um, criticising the, the government or the authorities in Zimbabwe.